Good morning card makers. This is Kathy Hansen and this morning I'm going to show you how to make this wonderful little easel card. We're using all Stampin' Up! materials today for this presentation and I'm featuring this wonderful paper, this cork paper that's going to be in the July December mini catalog. It's got little gold areas peeking through the cork on the front of the card stock and on the back it's it's very flexible it's more like paper than cardstock and it's just craft paper on the back but the front of it feels like cork it's a kind of a rubby rubbery feeling it's it's very cool paper but let's talk about the card okay so this is an easel card here it is closed and then when you open it on the inside there is a nice greeting, nice sentiment for a friend, and then the front folds down and you have this wonderful easel card so they can set it on their desk that they know that you're thinking of them all the time. So let's get started. These are all the pieces parts. I know it looks like a lot of pieces. So we're going to start on the inside. This is all the stuff for the front. These are the pieces for the inside. And because it's an easel card, we need to fold it in a kind of a peculiar way. So what we're starting with, and by the way, the design that I'm using today, this design with the squares, was actually inspired by Arlene Ross. Um, this was the card that I used as a sample just for the design of the paper. And you can see Arlene's cards at whatajmade.blogspot.com. So, moving on to making the card. The first thing that you need to do is cut a piece of paper that is 11 inches long. You're going to cut a piece of soft suede cardstock in half, basically. But instead of cutting it crossways, you're going to cut it lengthwise. So this is 4 and a quarter inches across, 11 inches long. And you're going to score it at 2 and 3 quarters inches and 5 and a half inches. This 5 and a half inches is half the length of the cardstock so that when you fold it you have a card and then the two and three-fourths inches is half of the distance between this end and the center. Okay. Now the reason we need to do that is because this section in the front needs to have a base to be attached to and so the fold allows it to sit back on the base. I'll explain more about that as we move along through the card. So on the inside what I've done is first of all I took a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock. This piece is five and a quarter by four inches and all of the measurements for these this card are actually on kathyscraftroom.blogspot.com so you don't need to be furiously writing down all these numbers or repeating the video to, to get the measurements because they are all set forth on that page. So we're going to go ahead and let's see, this is the stamp and seal, stampin' up, stamp and seal. We're going to go ahead and put this piece, piece of Knight of Navy cardstock onto the soft suede. You probably saw that little bit of goop that was sticking up. I actually did not stop this in the proper way. If you kind of do a check mark at the end of it, that will break the tape and you can continue on. So this is just centered here on the, on the inside. And then this piece of white cardstock is 5 inches by 3 and 3 fourths inches. And that's just going to go directly on top of the blue. The Knight of Navy. Like so. 
this piece, this is going to be the first piece of the cork that I use. And again, you can kind of just see those wonderful little bits of gold showing through the paper. I love that. Very festive and kind of fall looking. And that's kind of what this is, is a fall card. Kind of jumping the gun since we're just in the middle of summer, but what the heck, yeah, it's always good to be prepared. So this is going to go right at the very bottom of the white cardstock, like so. Then we have, in order to make this card um, an easel card, you need to have a stopper, something that will keep it from closing again. So that's what this will be. This greeting is going to be the piece that's going to hold it in place. And what I've done is I've cut three pieces. The Knight of Navy is, um, this is four and a half inches long by one inch wide. This is um, brushed metal, brushed metallic paper. There are three shades of gold. Um, well, this is actually more of a platinum, I think. But there are three shades of color, two pieces of each, 12 by 12 cardstock. And I'm using the lightest of the three colors because to me that seemed to match this gold the best. This piece is four and uh, three eighths inches long by seven eighths inches wide. And then the top piece where we're going to have the greeting is four and a quarter inches long by seven um, three quarters inch wide. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with these, and they're going to layer up very closely, there's only a sixteenth of an inch margin on these. What I'm going to use is my, um, sorry for the glare on that light, I've got too many lights in here, but I need the light to, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's not too bad. This is the pick, um, I'm sorry, let me, let me get my cheat sheet here. I know what it's called. I know what it's called, but when I get on camera, sometimes I forget. This is called the Lovely Labels Pick-A-Punch. So you can actually use either of these two designs. We're going to use this one. And this punch has three channels in it, so you can punch anywhere from a half an inch, half an inch, to three quarters of an inch, to one inch. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the one inch wide cardstock, I'm going to push it into that channel, and then I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over so that I can see the back, because that allows me to make sure that this is lined up absolutely centered. So there's the first punch, and you can see that gives you a, a lovely little edge. And then I'm going to do the other edge. So let's push that in, and yeah, that looks like it's lined up, so we're good to go there. And now we have the base for our sentiment. The next one actually doesn't have a channel. It's halfway between the one inch channel and the three quarters inch channel. So I'm just going to kind of fake it. I'm going to push that in to the punch, push it all the way to the back, and then at that point I will line it up by looking at the back. And that looks like it's fairly centered to me. So I'll go ahead and punch there. And then we'll get the other end. And I think that's just about right. So we'll punch that. Now we have our second layer. And then the top layer is white cardstock, and we're going to put our greeting on it, but this is one half inch wide, so it's going to go into the one half channel. And again, I'm going to line that up so that I can see that that's centered, and then punch, and then flip it around to the other side and punch on this end. And now we have the entire label, we just need to stamp a greeting on it. Put the punch away over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and attach this piece of uh, brushed metallic cardstock to the Knight of Navy. And as you can see, it's a very narrow edge, so you need to line that up very carefully to make sure that it's all straight. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do with this, 
what I'm going to do with this is I'm I'm using um, my alcohol markers I forgot to bring them down to this end of the table okay so I have just several different colors of Stampin' Blends in here these are Stampin' Up um, and what I'm going to use first is the ivory I don't like having the white because you can see on the front there's really no white in there so I don't want to have a white label so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint just sloppy uh, it, it doesn't need to be neat all I want to do is cover it so it's not white so that's what I'm doing here is just sloppily painting you can see I've already done a little painting over here on the other edge And I'm using the brush end of the marker. The other end of the out uh, the Stampin' Blends is actually a more of a kind of like a Sharpie marker, which is also pretty cool. This is going to take just a, just a very small amount of time. The alcohol dries very very quickly, but while it's drying, I'm gonna I want to make sure that it's completely dry because we're going to stamp over top of that. So what I'm going to do is use my liquid glue. This is my Tombow liquid glue, but I put it into these smaller containers because that way I have a little bit more control because of the fine tip on this container. And I'm just going to put little dots of glue here and there. I don't need to have a lot of glue, just enough to hold it in place and then maybe a little bit right here. And then I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to attach that on the cork kind of close to the top and this is just to give it a little bit more something something on the inside a little bit of glitter to correspond with the glitter in the paper okay so that's good that's ready to go now I think this is dry. As I mentioned, it, it takes very, very, very little time. And I'm going to use black ink to stamp this greeting. And the greeting is actually from Peaceful Moments, which is um, it's a stamp set that has just sentiments. And it's got some very nice sentiments. We're using the one at the top, the life is better with a friend like you. But you can see that there are all different um, sentiments in this set. So I'm going to ink this up. And then I'm going to line this up because I don't want to stamp it crooked heaven forbid and just gonna stamp that right on there okay life is better with a friend like you and then what I'm gonna do I'm going to heat emboss that because it just pops out a little bit more it makes the letters shiny and it pops it makes the the black darker and I put all my clear embossing folder into or embossing powder into one of these little containers because oh my gosh there's so much less mess by doing it this way and then I'm just going to tap the excess off back into the container and I'm actually not going to heat emboss this but you can see once you get the embossing powder on it it looks more faded out um, and it's because it's got those little it's got little crystals of um, I don't know maybe it's plastic or something and then when you heat it with a heat tool it will melt and it will look like this so you can see that the letters are shiny well maybe you can't see the lighting is not oh there you go a little bit on life you can see that those letters are shiny now so I'm going to go ahead and ta attach this piece over the brushed metallic Again, very carefully lining it up to 
just to make sure it's straight. Okay, that's a little bit off, but I wonder if I can pull that up. Sometimes I'm able to pull it up and move it over just a touch. And since it's on that metallic paper and it's kind of a shiny surface, yep, it's coming right off. And I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Yep, kind of bend it back in place. Okay, I'm going to start a little bit further over this time. There we go. That's much better. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is use Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. These are the big ones. There are also smaller ones that you can use. But these are just little foam hexagons. And I'm putting several on there because I don't want it to collapse, and I want it to be sturdy for the um, for the top. The top is actually once I get the once we get this piece on, um, this is actually pretty heavy, so I want it to be sturdy enough to hold that in place without slipping. Move those backing pieces. And I'm just going to move the stamp out of the way so I don't get it on the front. And then I'm just going to center it right here at the top of the cork paper. Okay, the inside is now finished. And this is ready to go. As you can see, now when you fold this piece down, this piece is going to hold it in place so that it's not going to kind of flop back closed. So I'm going to set this aside while we work on the front of the card. And bringing this, all of this stuff over, we're going to start with a base. And the base is going to be the same as a regular size card. So this is five and a quarter inches, uh, I'm sorry, five and a half inches tall, four and a quarter inches wide. And we need this to build the front of the card on because this is what's going to sit on that flap on the front to make it the easel card. This again is the Knight of Navy cardstock, and this is the same as the inside piece. It's five and a quarter inches long and four inches wide. And that's just going to center over top of the soft suede. Okay, there we go. Now we have four little pieces of the cork paper, and then I also have, well, two pieces of the cork, and then I also have two pieces of um, this is one of the designs from In Good Taste Designer Series Paper. And these, pa these pieces are a peculiar little size just to make them fit nicely within the blue, the Knight of Navy. So these pieces are each cut at 2 and 7 sixteenths inches long and 1 and 13 sixteenths inches across. Um, hopefully you have a paper cutter that shows your sixteenths. It's marked at the sixteenths of an inch because that's going to be very essential when you're putting this together. And what I'm going to do first is just line these up where I want them to make sure that they're going to fit nicely on that cardstock. And then I'll go ahead and attach them. Okay, so that looks like it's going to fit. Yay! I actually cut them right first try. Sometimes unusual. Sometimes I'm pretty good at that. Okay, so we're going to use this incredibly sticky stuff. And I sometimes put a little bit too much, but then again, my cards also don't fall apart. So that's a good thing, I think. And it's easier for me. I'm left-handed, so everything I do looks kind of cattywampus. Um, I'm going to put this right about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. And then I'm going to line up 
the In Good Taste designer paper right next to it. Okay, so this one is going to line up right here again about maybe just slightly more than, oh I guess that's an eighth of an inch, slightly more than an eighth of an inch I think. Okay, and it's got a little bit bigger gap in the center, but that's fine. Then I'm going to flip it around. I find it easier to um, work from the top than the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing at the other end. And when I put this paper on, I measure from the top rather than lining it up right here with the bottom piece. I measure from the top because if there's a bigger gap in the center, I'm not so concerned about that, generally speaking. And this way, uh, I know that it's going to be equal distance from all the edges. So again, lining this up about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And that lines up with the bottom. And then, oh. Okay, here we go. Then we have this other piece of designer paper right up here across from it, and we'll line that up along the edge as well. Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. This is off just slightly, but I'm not going to try to remove it to replace it because I know that I will make a big mess and tear up the paper, and I think this is going to be fine. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to insert this little shaker card uh, globe. And we need to have a hole to put it into, so that's what we're going to do next. I have the jar punch, and what I'm going to do with the jar punch is move this, this is the same shape, as you can see, as the shaker card. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go from the bottom. Do you know what? I did this again. I do this every time. Every time I've made this card, I have done this. And it just makes me crazy. But I was prepared for it. I knew that I might do something stupid. So I brought my little silicone sheet that I can... Luckily, this removes fairly easily. It did get a, picked up a little bit of the darker cardstock, but that's okay. I have a silicone sheet that nothing sticks to. So I'm going to use my silicone sheet, put it under this piece that has the adhesive on it. And what I think I'm going to also do is I brought all my tools down here with me. I have these wonderful little glue erasers. I'm just going to remove with this glue eraser. You can see that it's coming off. Um, I'm going to remove just the bottom part because if I don't, this paper is going to get caught in my punch. Ask me how I know this. Okay, now I've got a little glop of it there and I can remove it. I, cut, I get these in squares and then I cut them in fourths so that I have something that's more like a pencil eraser that's easier for me to use. Okay, now, now I can take the jar punch. I'm going to line it up from the back and it is equally distant from each side and I pushed it down as far as I could so that it will be a little bit up from the bottom of this piece and then we're just going to punch and now we have this cute little jar that you may want to use for another project but we're good with this one now and I need to now make the piece that's going to go under here with the jar on it so I have a blank piece and I'm going to show you how I stamp the jar. Again using the black ink I inked this up and then I stamped it near the bottom. 
this is just a scrap piece of paper and I think that the measurement on it is uh, it's about two and a half by three and a half inches or two inches by three inches maybe but it's not real important because most of it's going to be hidden most of it's going to be hidden anyway okay so now we have our stems the next thing we're going to do is the jar and I think I forgot to bring my little my little sticky note with me which is good because this way I can show you how I made the little mat that we're going to use this jar has lines in it that I don't want um, I don't want them to cover this up because I'm going to be putting the shaker over it I'm going to be putting little sequins inside of it so I, I really don't want these because that's supposed to give the effect of looking like glass and we're already going to have that so we don't need it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sticky note and this is the sticky edge of it right here so I'm going to stamp an image right there on the edge and then I'm going to use my paper snips and I'm going to cut out the center part where those little pieces are where all those little lines are why am I doing this you may ask well wait until you see this it is just slick it's called masking and if there's any part of a stamp that you don't want to show you can just cover it up and then that way or if there's a part if you've already I should say if you've already stamped something and you don't want to stamp something over it you could just cover it up and that's what we're going to do here I'm going to take this sticky note I'm going to cover up the stems except for the top part I need the top part to show me where to stamp the jar so that part I'm leaving open and then I'm going to stamp this right over top and now you can see I've stamped over top of those that I've already had those lines and I must have lined it up perfectly because you can't even tell and then here is the jar without these lines which is exactly what I wanted okay so what I'm going to do is again I'm going to put this into the embossing powder and tap off the excess I'm not going to emboss that because it's noisy it's just so noisy so guess what here we have one that's been embossed you can see it's got that shiny black deep black image on there then what I'm going to do is take I'm going to go back to this ivory cover up my stamp pad so I don't get ink in my on my elbow or get my elbow in the ink I'm going to just paint a little bit of the old ivory around the edges of the jar you know another reason that it's sometimes good to emboss when you're using different colors is when you if you're using alcohol markers or um, stamp and write markers whatever you happen to be using um, it's not a bad idea to emboss it anyway because some inks are not really good at staying in place they they bleed onto they bleed throughout the design and um, make little muddy colors in there that you really don't want okay then what I'm going to use is the light soft succulents color and I'm going to paint the stems you know this might be better with the marker in let's try the marker in to get into these tiny little areas it's kind of a thick end it looks thick but it can do very narrow thin lines for you okay and I'm not being particularly careful about this either because this is going to be inside the shaker gnome so you're not going to see um, a, a real um, clear picture of it anyway 
and it's also going to have shaker pieces on top of it, the sequins. So it's not really important, kind of important. Then what I'm going to do, this is a pretty cool stamp. The stamp set that I'm using for this is Jar of Flowers. And Jar of Flowers has, th these two stamps are the same stamp. You can stamp the image, the detailed image, with one side, like we did with the jar. And then what I've done with this stamp, you can't really tell, I don't think, by looking at this, but I flipped it over so that these lines are actually on the bottom facing the acrylic block and what's on the top is just this flat surface. So now we're going to use that stamp. And this time I'm going to use Versamark, which is a clear, very sticky, very moist um, ink that is really good for using with embossing powder. And I'm going to stamp this just across the bottom. And that's going to give the illusion, when we put the clear embossing powder on it, that's going to give the illusion of those stems sitting in some water. Or hopefully it will give that illusion. Of course, like I said, it's going to be inside the, the shaker jar, so or the shaker dome, so it's not necessarily going to show up that much anyway. But then when I heat emboss this, it will look like this. So it will be shiny. The bottom part is shiny. You can see the entire bottom part is shiny, not just the letters, or not just the stamped image. And that kind of gives, oh, just maybe a little illusion of sitting in water. So then what I'm going to do is continue on with the ivory, and let's get the rest of those stems on this piece I didn't get all of those stems colored in on the top. The reason I wanted to, and actually it looks like I used the darker color for these, so let's use the darker color for this one. This is the dark soft succulents, stamp and blends. So and that actually may make them show up a little bit anyway, a little bit better. Um, what I have, the reason that I did that first is because I'm going to put this ivory marker across the entire image, but as you can see, it's not showing up quite as much in the center. It's lighter in the center where the embossing powder is, it doesn't stick to that embossing powder quite as much as it does in the other areas. So that's kind of why I did that. Then at the top, but you can see it still has that shine. The Maybe you can't, yeah, there you go. You can see that there's still shine all the way across the bottom there. Okay, now I'm going to use the bronze Stampin' blend, and I'm going to color the lid just a little bit. That's actually not the lid, I guess it's the jar top. Okay, now we're ready to put in some little pieces of sequins for our shaker. And what I'm using for that is something called Sequence for Everything. This is a very cool little package. It's got, oh, it's got a little bit of fall colors. It's got some green, it's got red, and then it's got silver and gold. And what I'm going to do is pick up just a pinch of the fall colors and kind of put those in the center here. And then I'm going to pick up, oh, just another little pinch of the silver and gold and put those in there. You don't really need a lot, maybe just a couple more pieces of the fall colors. You don't really need a lot to make a good shaker card. Shaker cards, sometimes people think that they need to put tons and tons of stuff in there, but the more you put in there, the more, um, the more difficult it is for the contents to shake around. And then sometimes you cover up your image or whatever else is in there, which you really don't want to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, this little 
this little dome has sticky stuff on the bottom and it also has sticky stuff on the top. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to remove the backing from the bottom part, this little ring here, and I'm going to very carefully put this right over the image. Oh, this is so scary. I think I lined it up fairly well. That's not too bad. Okay, now we have this piece. And then what I'm going to do with this is pull out my little... I've got this little pad. I, I have this marked. This is my, my foam pad. So poke this side and stamp this side. You can see that I accidentally poked a few times on the stamp side, but... I have more, so it'll be fine. And I can't find my pick a tool, take a pick tool. So I'm going to use the old fashioned hole punch paper piercer. And right here at the bottom of the where the top of the jar starts, I'm going to poke a hole on each side through all thicknesses. And then that's going to be ready for me to put my ribbon in there. Uh, actually, I'm not using ribbon. I'm using linen thread. So let me unwrap that. I'm going to cut off about 24 inches. I love this tape. This is It used to be called Hugo's Amazing Tape, and I'm not real sure what it's called now, but I get it from Amazon.com, and it's kind of like saran wrap in that it sticks to itself, but it doesn't have adhesive on it, so it doesn't stick to anything else. And you can reuse it over and over and over. It looks like I'm going to lose the end here. And then I'll have a big mess. Okay, so I'm going to cut about 24 inches. And I'm going to use my grid sheet to measure because it has a ruler at the bottom. This is 16 inches right here. And then I'm going to do about another 8 inches. So there's another 8 inches. And... just going to snip that off and so that this doesn't unravel again I will replace my Hugo's amazing tape you can actually I think you can even get it at Walmart it's called nano tape and as you can see it is it's awesome it's just awesome I use it for everything okay I can set that aside and then I'm taking a, a needle that has a fairly large eye in it and I'm going to thread this to the center of the, th of the linen thread. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you, this is a neat trick, because you, you can see that this thread is kind of coily. Um, yes, I intended to say coily instead of curly, because it kind of coils up. And y there's a neat trick for getting all of those coils out of there. If you just take your thumbnail and your finger, the same it's it, it works basically the same as if you were going to use scissors for curling ribbon to make it curl. What we're going to do here is take the curl out. So I'm just going to take that, pull it down, and you can see that that is much more straight than it was before. I'm going to do that on both sides. And then you have more straight thread to work with. I'm going to push it in on one side. I'm going to pull it back out on the other side. And then I'm going to snip the end of it again to take the needle off. So there we go. And then for the time being, I'm just going to let that hang there because I, I kind of want it out of my way. And I think it's going to be easier to work with while it's not tied. So now I'm going to remove the backing from the front sticky stuff and you'll see all around the edge of this it's sticky. Then I'm going to go back to this piece and I'm going to bring my silicone mat back over. I'm going to lay this down and then the shape of the dome is exactly the same as the same size as the shape that we punched 
into this front piece. So I'm just going to line that up, again being very careful because this sticky stuff is real sticky. There we go, all lined up, and then just press around the edges, and there you have it. You know what I did forget to do though, you can see a little bit of white, just a tiny sliver of white around the edges there. And on the others, I had taken my ivory and I kind of did a little scribble around the outside of it so that it wouldn't show. So I kind of forgot to do that here. And then there is a very cool way to tie a bow. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's difficult to tie a bow around something and get a nice tight um, knot on there. So I have a trick for that too. I have my little glue dots right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove one of these little itty bitty glue dots and I want to have my bow right about here. So I've put a glue dot right there. I don't know if you can see it so well, but right there is where my glue dot is. And that's where I want the knot for the bow. So when I pull this tight, this is my first crossover for the bow, when I pull it tight, I can have that line up right on top and then push that. Now you don't need to have three hands or another person's finger to tie this bow. You can just pull it around. It's going to stay in place for you. Pull it around and tie your little bow. Since I don't usually have an extra person around to help me with this, I have devised ways to do things that I can do all by myself. Okay, and then I'm going to use my bigger scissors to trim these edges because those paper snips work wonderful on paper. They're not quite as good on ribbon and thread if you want to get a nice clean cut. So these are marked. Oh, I guess the mark came off. They used to say um, for ribbon only but I think I did it with with uh, Sharpie and the Sharpie has worn off after all these years. So now since I kind of moved this around here and there I'm going to reinforce this stickiness with a little bit of liquid glue. So I'm just going to put that around the edges. I definitely want to cover this area. And then I can go ahead and put that onto that piece of brown cardstock or soft suede cardstock. And I'm just going to center that on there. Okay, we're good. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take these little pieces. These were cut from, these two pieces came from the sunflower dies and this piece came from the poppy moment dies and I'm going to kind of line them up where I think I'm going to want them and then I'm going to set the little flower image on top of it. This flower image again I stamped it and then I used the embossing powder so that the lines are nice and deep and this kind of shows you that I used the soft succulents blends for the leaves and each of these each of these blends has a light and a dark and I used all of them because that way you can get your shading in I used daffodil delight for the flowers I used night of navy which I thought was going to be really dark but it really came out a, a very pleasant shade I used this night of navy for all these flowers that weren't daisies so this little flower and then there are some little, tiny little flowers up in here that I used the Night of Navy for. And then I had Blackberry Bliss that I used for, I think this is a thistle, and I decided it needed to be Blackberry Bliss. So that's what I used for that. And then the final color I used on this was bronze, and that is the center of the sunflowers. And then also I went in, in these little areas where it 
wasn't colored in, I used the ivory just to fill in a little bit of those areas. Um, you can kind of see it on my piece that I finished, which I had just a minute ago. And I will find it again because it's on this table very close to where we're working. But I'm going to put all of these markers back into the box. Here it is. It was under the markers. So you can see that this is, this is what it looks like. And I made this in advance because A, you don't want to watch me fussy cut this piece. It takes a little while because I just, I don't mind fussy cutting. Um, but I do take my time with it so that it comes out really nice. And here is where you can see I used a little bit of that ivory and then kind of up in some of these other areas where there was no other color so there wouldn't be big blobs of white sticking out. And then what I did with this was um, use the Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm going to put a few here and there. And then I always like to put one in the center, too, because sometimes those center pieces just want to sink in for some reason. It's like a big sinkhole right in the middle of whatever you're putting on there. So I'm going to remove, well, I'm not going to remove them yet. What I'm going to do is set this down and see if that's where I want it. And yes, I think that's a pleasing arrangement. So I'm going to use the liquid glue. Uh-oh, I forgot to close up the liquid glue, which means it could be clogged. Hopefully not. Pull out the little goopy stuff. So I'm going to use the liquid glue, just tiny little dots. Oh, it's good. And I'm going to attach these where I've got them laid out. So this one went right about there, I think. And then this piece is going to, and I just use, I don't put it anywhere other than just a few dots on the leaves because that seems to work pretty well for me. So that one kind of went down this way. And then this last piece is going to go back over on the other side. Glue, 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 glue. That was one of the first words my grandson said when he was little. He used to walk around my craft room and point at everything and go, dis, dis, because he wanted me to tell him what it was. And he pointed at the glue, and I told him it was glue, and I'll be darned if he didn't turn right around and say, glue. And he really wasn't talking at that point. So to hear him pronounce it so nicely just made my heart happy and then his mom came to pick him up that night after work and I said Finn do you want to tell mommy your new word you learned today and he I pointed at the glue and I said what's this and he said very clearly glue does a crafter's heart proud <laughs> mama was very impressed too Okay, now this just pops up. So, that's the front, except for, I always feel the need to do one last little thing. Sometimes more is just more, but I think in this case, this is a good more. So all I'm going to do is add some of these little metallic pearls. These are the gold ones. And I'm going to put one right here and then I'm going to put one here and one here and now the front is complete so let's move this stuff out of the way and we'll attach it to the card base remember that we did that a long time ago here's the card base and what I'm going to do with this, again, we only want to attach it to this bottom part. If we attach it with glue to the top, it won't open. It'll just, the whole thing will just open this way, but it won't open and fold down the way it needs to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this out so it's easier to work with, and then 
I'm going to use the Stampin' Up. This is called Stampin' Seal Plus, and it's stickier than the other stuff. And this one actually has little rectangles, little clear rectangles of glue. So I'm going to put some right here across the top. You can kind of see that, the little lines in there where the rectangles are. Then I'm going to put one across the bottom. And then just for good measure, I think I'm also going to put one in the middle. Just to make sure that it holds nicely. And put that lid back on. I'm always pretty good about putting lids back on. I don't want my glues to dry out. Put the other one over there too. Then you can go ahead and just very carefully, I like to leave it laid out this way so that you're not, you don't have this dimension to deal with from the inside. So I like to just lay it out flat and then I line it up from the bottom because I figure if the bottom is square, the rest of it will be too. Okay, we've got the bottom. Looks good. So I'm just going to press down and now you can see that it's glued only to the bottom section and the card is finished. So, I certainly hope that you enjoyed this video despite the little glitches here and there. The card closed, the card open. Thank you very much for watching today. And again, if you visit Kathy's Craft Room .blogspot .com, you will see a list of all of the ingredients used for this card. Thank you.